What's happening, hun? Washington's final rinse. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Shouldn't that be hanging on the side of the boat? It was hanging on the side of the boat, but it was a windy night and I didn't expect that. So this is not a good start to the day, is it? Oh. <laughs> it's the last day on our plot with our garden, so I've harvested everything I can. We've eaten so many vegetables over the last few days just because I don't want to leave it to go rotten. And the rest of the stuff I'm going to try. The turnips, beetroots, carrots, I'm going to put into some compost or some sand and try and store them for a little while. The rest we're just going to have to eat as quickly as we can now. But um, that's it. Harvest is in and we're ready to go, nearly. I think you need to feed the dogs before they eat you. They can have a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> you want your dinner? You want dinner? You always come to bite my ankles now. <laughs> <laughs> It's our last evening at our mooring and um, I'm just taking the dogs off for their last walk up the hill which I've been up nearly nearly every day since we've been here either morning or evening and the view is stunning. The boat is just behind the bridge behind me um, and in a couple of minutes walk along the towpath I'll come to a gate and I'll take you up the hill with me tonight and just show you the stunning view that we've had Unfortunately, we haven't got a sunny evening for the last night, but um, to be honest, that's what it's been like while we've been here. So I'll take you for a walk and I'll show you the hill and I'll show you the view of what we're leaving behind. One thing that's been really lovely, being in one place for so long, has been watching these hedgerow plants grow and the canal side plants grow. When we first came here, it was March, April, and the plants were just beginning to peep through. But there's been so many flowers along here and watching them all grow up, burst into flower, and now many of them have just turned to seeds and are beginning to fruit. The trees are beginning to fruit. We've got hawthorns beginning to develop on the trees, elderberries beginning to develop. It's been lovely watching that happen. But even so, we're still looking forward to finding new plants and new trees um, in new settings. It's going to be fabulous. Last bunch of flowers, Fran? Yeah, just thought we'd take some wildflowers with us just to cheer the boat up a bit and the last lot of sweet peas. And um, yeah, it's a little bit sad, but it will keep us cheerful over the next week. So that's it. Last day here at Lazy Acres, Fran. I know, and it does feel a little bit bittersweet. It's, um, it is sad to be going and it has been wonderful. Thank you, Yorkshire. But time is now to move on, isn't it? It is. We've said our goodbyes. We've harvested all the fruit and veg that we can and uh, packed everything away, given tools away and ready just to go now, put the plants on the roof and off we go. I've, I have potted up some of the herbs and plants to take with us, but the vegetables all have to stay for the next renter owner to enjoy, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully somebody will come along quickly and take it over for us. Uh, that'd be great. But anyway, the sun's trying to shine today. Um, we've had lots of people say don't be put off by staying just because you've had a bad summer. It isn't anything to do with the weather. No. We're not bothered about weather. No. It's more to do with what's in our hearts and, uh, and if one of us isn't particularly happy then the other one won't be happy. So the decision's been made. We're going to be looking forward to cruising. We are so excited again, aren't we? 
people have said how brave we are to change our mind and make a different decision but it's it's not I don't think it's brave at all as you say if one person feels that they're not in the right place you go with it and um, we've never been frightened of changing direction fortunately neither of us are scared of um, breaking the rules and no. making a new decision going Absolutely. a new direction so that's what we're doing so we've got three locks to do this morning and we better crack on because there's a few boats gone up already and there'll be a queue so um, the locks close at one and i think it's nearly one, yeah. 11 now so we've just got to put plants on the roof um see if he lets me take all the ones i want to take <laughs> he, he, mr ogre but um yeah we'll see you on route yeah come on let's go well goodbye yorkshire morning it's been a great five months I'm not leaving Fran behind, she's taking the dogs for a walk while we get to the locks. I've been living a bit of a sedentary lifestyle for the last few months. First month we were at the morning I got really stuck into the garden and then I just got a bit bored. Tired of walking in the same places and uh, so I just tended to hide inside the boat for a while. Anyway, looking forward to pastures new as they say and uh, I've put on a few pounds so I need to up the walking again and exploring so looking forward to that. Got some hills to climb coming up. Fran spent an hour or so yesterday looking at the maps and reading the books as to what's coming up so um, yeah it's going to be great getting back on it again. Really looking forward to it. I was interested to read the other day that apparently here in the UK we throw away the milk yield of 40,000 cows per year. So that's 40,000 cows that don't have to live in the conditions they live in during winter especially, standing on concrete floors, lying in their own excrement etc etc and apparently they're blaming it on the fact that it's best before dates and people have forgotten how to smell whether milk is off or not and just read the best before date before testing the milk before they chuck it down the sink just sniff the milk people so here we are at the first lock Fran's gone up to wrecky the situation because the top lock uh, is broken, partly broken because one of the sluice paddles isn't working. So you have to go through assisted passage with somebody from CRT to guide you through. So we don't know what's going on, so I'm just staying on the back. I've been given instructions to go and check the cake out that's in the oven. Yum yum. So wait for Fran to come back, see what's going on. I absolutely love this little hill here with its cops on the top and I've taken so many photos of it with a view to painting it but I haven't got around to doing it yet. But the countryside here is just stunning. So these holiday boaters kindly waited for us to come through the middle lock together with them and uh, they're off to the top lock now and I think the top lock they're only allowing one boat in at a time uh, because of the damage to it so we'll see once we get up there well good news we can go up the lock together but uh, because of the paddle not working properly and the fact that a boat sank in this lock a few weeks ago uh, they're wanting us to tie up to the center line and also for Fran to hang onto the rear line so the boat doesn't crash forward into the front gates just as a precaution
cutting it on the inside. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Fran, you're going to hit the bank. Schoolgirl error, me thinks. <laughs> I think we're out of practice. Yeah, I think you're right. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, it's been so long that I forgot we've got bow thrusters. <laughs> Fully experienced boater like you wouldn't need bow thrusters, though, Fran. <laughs> no, I know. But, uh, it's been a long while. We need to do more cruising. That's all I've got to say. Good news, nobody was there to watch, but these are the moorings we want because the Anchor Inn apparently has reopened and if possible we'd like to get into the basement and have a look. All might be revealed. So this is sort of for moorings. It's really lovely. The pub's there and um, second deck mate is there. Cool. And it's, <laughs> we can't believe there's nobody here. The rest of the moorings have all been really busy and this just looks lovely. So we'll go and investigate in a bit and see if said pub is open. Yes? Uh, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to clean this side of the boat. Cool. It's a bit and mucky, this bit isn't of it? The roof, because we've been moored up that way around, it's not been cleaned for ages. Yeah, it does need a bit of a scrub. So, how was your first cruise? Bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely. And uh, how was you when you left the moorings? When I pulled away? I cried. Oh, baby. <laughs> Are you okay? It's not a bad thing to be sad sometimes. It doesn't mean I want to stay there. It just means I'm not very good at saying goodbye to things. I'm really happy to be moving now. <laughs> Glad to hear <laughs> it. <laughs> oh. But I have to have a beer. Yeah, that's it. The root of all evil and cures. Back to normal. Cruising and stuff. Boozing. <laughs> no, please don't. And look at the roof of the boat. Look, we've got a new mooring, plants on the roof, a new view, peace and quiet. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And it's perfect. Well, it's half past seven in the morning. Let's see what the weather holds today. Oh, joy. Lovely. Well, it's 10.30 in the morning. Rub your eyes, it's early. <laughs> Where are we going, friend? We're going to the pub. Yep. <laughs> All will be revealed. <laughs> so we're going inside the pub because there's something a bit special to have a look at. And we had a quick beer in there yesterday, but um, Michelle, the new manager, couldn't take us to see it because she was on our own behind the bar. So she's kindly allowed us to come here at 10.30 in the morning to come and have a look. It's been a long time since I've been in a pub at 10.30 in the morning, Fran. Oh, it tells them so since you've been in a pub. I was going to argue with yeah, you then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, front door's locked, isn't it? I did lock it. Let me check. So we're uh, going down into the cellar of the Anchor Inn. Yeah. This is one of the oldest buildings in the village. And uh, I think they're going to be a bit gobsmacked when we get to the bottom here. Just go past the wine, Rich. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big spider went across there. So this used to be the original ground floor of the old pub. It's amazing, we'll talk to it? think it's talk more about it. When well, we know more about it later. Well, let's one today. <laughs> check this out. Look at these stalactites. 
stalactites from the top. Stalactites bank. hang down because yeah. they hold on tight. And there are some stalagmites <laughs> at the bottom as well. Oh look my at that. god, look at those. That is incredible, isn't it? Look at that. So this is original ground level. We're at street level now, originally, and that would have been the pub front door yeah. there, behind front. Yeah, this is the original step here then, coming in. Oh, it's so cold and damp in here. Look at those. That is amazing. So we're now actually in the original pub below the, the existing ground level now, and there's the original fire in the lounge or snug as it used to be. And this is the original door and the original window. And on the other side of that is underneath the old road, which is... Yeah, <laughs> well, the road was bizarre. originally there, but yeah. now the road is above there. Yeah, they raised the road when the canal was built. So we'll explain a bit more in, in detail when we get out. But Do we yeah, know how old this is, this bit? Mid 17th century, yeah. Are there any ghosts? There are. Should we go? Yeah. That was amazing. I'm just gobsmacked and stunned. It's got such a fabulous feel about it. So much history. And thank you so much, Michelle, for taking yeah. us around. It was a real experience. So the original pub was one level below us because they built the canal after the pub was built. The pub was built in the 17th century. So 100 years later or so, they built this canal then they had to obviously raise the level of the road to go over the canal. And as a consequence, then the water started coming into the pub. So they built the pub another level higher. And it's exactly the same footprint. The yeah. walls, which are sort of this thick, the original walls are now supporting the whole new pub above exactly on the same footprint. But yeah, absolutely amazing. And uh, we didn't think we'd be able to get to see it, but so thanks to Michelle for showing oh, us yeah. around this time of the day. And uh, the beer there is excellent. It is. And a really, really good lovely price local as well. beer. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, do come along and pop in and say hello to Michelle and the team. Um, but yeah, really wonderful. And she just got, dug out some old pictures for us as well, didn't she? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So we had got those to show you. But yeah, we're going to have a quick walk around the village now, see what else we can find. And um, But originally, just further along the canal, it's not there anymore, we couldn't see it. There was a wharf where they used to load stone from the hills directly onto the barges. And I think they were barges then. Mm. And there's pictures of the stone barges outside the pub moored up. And that's, you know, where it would all happen. There was a wharf opposite that's not there anymore. The whole area has completely changed. But Michelle, and I, I hope she does, and she says she's going to try and keep it all original and restore as much as, it, as she can. And some of the old paintings as well. She yeah, found an old, old painting. painting in the cellar, wasn't it? Yeah. Love it. So, yeah. Love it. I'd love to Fab come back. What have we got here, Fran? <laughs> this well goes back to the 12th century, apparently, um, and it's got some ancient history about it. It was known as Ginny's Well, named after a mythological person called Ginny Greenteeth, mm, nice. who was a witch that used to look after this well and scare away any children that were misbehaving behind it. And then later, it was um, a source of water for the mill and all the mill workers and the whole village used to get their water from here. It is now surrounded by a big new housing estate, but fortunately they've kept the well here. But uh, yes, I don't know where Ginny Greenteeth is now, but yeah. how interesting. They've made it into a, quite a nice little garden, haven't they? Yeah, yes, it's lovely. Let's see if we could get the contract to cut it back a bit because it's a bit overgrown. <laughs> I like it. Look at that honeysuckle. That's gorgeous. Right, moving on. Nice to see the verge made into a little meadow. Beautiful. 
Ancient stone sign. Oh, yeah. Cross lane. Is this cross lane? Yeah. In the right direction. That way. Ye oldie mini car. It's a really old village. It's really lovely. Got as soon as you get off the main road, you get the traffic noise yeah. just goes, doesn't it? It's amazing. As is often the way, the, the road spoils the village in a way. Oh, I'll tell you what, Fran. I need to get some exercise. You are? I'm huffing and puffing like a huffy puffy thing up here. You see, when we first took on the mooring, within a few few weeks, we felt so flexible <laughs> because of all the digging and the work. But once that was done and it was just a little bit of gentle weeding, it all went to pot, didn't it? Yeah, I went to pot. <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> but um, that will happen. Anyway, where are we going? Uh, we're trying to find an old marker stone. Uh -huh. I think there's some debate about whether it's original or not, but we'll make our minds up when we get there. So what are we looking at, Fran? Well, this old stone, which is obviously a directional sign, but there's a few anomalies about it. Some, it they're saying it's about 300 years old, but Salter Firth, or Salter Fud, was all originally Salter Firth. Um, so they're not quite sure whether it's original or a copy or what, but it's mm -hmm. interesting to see anyway. And the S's are back to France. Yeah, and also the word gill originally. A gill, I believe, is a stream or a brook, but going back it wouldn't have had a G and an H, it would have just been G-I-L-L. -L. So, who knows? Yes, a bit of an anomaly. So there is apparently a village trail which is designed for children but there's been a few markers around the village but we can't actually find the map or the plan to follow which is a little bit of a shame. And also some of these historic sites they're not very well, there's not a lot of information about them unless you really delve deep into the local history sites. So I guess that just means that as we're travelling along I need to do a bit more work researching when we go places because we would have missed these wouldn't we? Yeah. I can hear trickling water. Uh, I can hear a kettle being filled and a cake being sliced. Who's doing that then? Are you looking into the future? <laughs> yeah. In about a half an hour's time, yeah, maybe? Absolutely. Come on then. Let's move on. We didn't actually come out in the right clothing for this little walk, Francis. No, look at my feet. I'm in my Sunday best. We're walking through muddy path, but I guess my shoes and my feet are all washable, so. Anyway, is that a new pair of dungarees you've got no, on? No, no, these are my freshly dyed dungarees because I sat on a greasy patch in my cream coloured dungarees. So I dyed them. Along with shorts of yours. Yeah. And I've got the bug now because they've come out so well I'm going to go around dyeing everything. Ah. But I can only do this in a washing machine because it was chemical dye that goes into the water system. I can't do it on the canal, so. Yeah, so come on Luby Lou. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that sky, isn't it? Gorgeous. It's grey. Yeah. <laughs> Typical <laughs> Northern England summer's day. Do you know what? I'm actually getting fed up with moaning about the weather. Well, don't do it then. It is grey. Look at that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and this is still August. August bank holiday weekend almost. September's going to be fab though, isn't it? It is. <laughs> 